Hello web developers, uh, welcome to another project walkthrough. This time it's the visual enhancement project. So we will be adding some animations and transitions to a Vue.js application that will uh, allow us to build a better user interface and create a better user experience. Um, so let's take a quick peek at this uh, repository and review these requirements. Um, we see here we're getting um, a, another application powered by the DataMuse API, which is a great application or a great API for suggesting words. Um, this will allow us to build a word list. Um, so great. We're going to use the View to Animate project, which brings animate.css animations in for easy use uh, with View to uh, uh, transitions. So that will be very helpful. Um, we're going to add a spinner to the display of, um, of, of the screen when we go to load data. Um, we're going to add um, animation to the items of the word list. Um, we're going to add animation to the items of the results list for when we do a search on, on the DataMuse API. We're going to add messages to the results display area so that the user can tell when no results are found. Um, we're going to add a global messaging child component uh, that will be a message container component that will actually uh, contain global messages. Uh, we'll add global success messages, info message, um, and error messages to alert the user of different things that happen um, in working the application. Uh, like always, we do have some stretch goals uh, laid out, so if you feel like an extra challenge, feel free to check those out. And um, we also have a project page here that you can reference in the uh, Practical JavaScript 2 book, uh, which will um, tell you how to complete this project uh, in a good level of detail. So um, we should be basically ready to go. Um, we are basically uh, running through all these different requirements uh, to make all of these things happen. Uh, so we'll go ahead and keep those basic requirements up there. And of course, the first place that we're going to start is we're going to fork the repo into our own personal GitHub area. So if you want to begin working this project without seeing how it goes, um, go ahead and cut out now, and you can uh, check back in if you need any tips. Otherwise, we're going to clone um, our repository down to the... Um, down to our development area uh, and then we will go in there and we will run npm install to install all of our dependencies and once this is complete then we will be able to open up our files run our server and get going on editing this project so uh, let's go ahead and open up this directory in sublime that is my text editor of choice uh, I encourage you to use your own text editor of choice and don't don't feel like you have to use sublime um, per se although I do like sublime so I think it's a good choice <laughs> um, and then let's go ahead and run uh, the development server so that we can see what this thing looks like now So we can see that we can do a search. We can find synonyms for car. Uh, we don't get any loading at all, but the, the results show up there. And then we can add to our word list, and we can remove from our word list. And as you can see, they just kind of blip in and out there. There's no messages or anything. If we, um, if we get a mess up or anything like that, we can't, you know, um, we're not going to be told that there were no results or anything like that if we search for a word that just, just does not exist or, or whatnot. So um, so the first thing that we need to do is actually add the spinner. Uh, so if we look at that, uh, we need to import the cube spinner as a child component first. So to do that, we're going to say import cube spinner from uh, at symbol components cube spinner and then down here in components um, we need to say 
spinner is cube spinner. And um, then up here, we'll say, oh, I don't know what that, don't know where that came from. Um, <laughs> we will add in a spinner tag and we'll use the VF and um, that should be show spinner. So we'll uh, we'll check against show spinner. If show spinner, then it will show the spinner right there. Um, so we can get rid of this to do. We can uh, save that, and um, we should be able to see that our page works, uh, but we still don't have the spinner showing. And the reason for that is because we have not modulated that spinner. So um, in the find words function here, uh, the first thing that we need to do is show the spinner. So we'll say show spinner equals true. And get rid of that. And then we need to turn off the spinner. So show spinner equals false. And then turn off the spinner again. And that should allow us to double check and see uh, what we can um, do. So if we go find synonyms for boat, we can see the loading showed up there just for a second. Um, if we pull up our Chrome developer tools uh, and we get into um, some of the settings, we can uh, turn our we can turn our uh, on a simulator in here to uh, slow things down um, and simulate as if we are uh, actually on like a 3G network. Um, so that can um, that can be a good way to uh, you know simulate that you are um, here. You go under network. If we say like a slow 3G, and we run this query again, we will be able to see it. I'm going to go ahead and put it over onto the side so that we can see it a little bit better. If we search, notice how the loading lasts a lot longer there, and we can actually see how things are are going. So. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it back to just online so that we're back to normal speed and then we'll be able to see kind of where that, um, how that, how that message comes up there. So we verified that our loader, our load spinner is loading properly. Um, so we can get on to the next part of the project, which is to animate the items in the word list. Um, so if we go up here. So we need to um, animate uh, the items in the search results. Um, so let's go ahead and put that uh, transition group around um, this list item here. And we'll go ahead and take care of our indentation because we care that that is all proper. And we are going to need to add a name to this. And this name is going to be the correspond to the animation that will run. So we're using the view to animate uh, package. And that package contains several pre-built animations. Um, and so uh, that um, this name needs to correspond to one of those pre-made animations and it should. Um, then we also want to put a custom tag on here uh, to properly wrap these list items in a tag and then we want to use the appear because we want them to show up we want them to animate when they're first put on the screen not only when they get updated. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and hit save there and then um, we should be able to check out in our uh, editor here and we can um, do a little do a little search and see our stuff doesn't actually show up there um, so I'm assuming that we've got some kind of bug um, and what we're seeing here is all of these errors right here one for each 
thing that tried to be displayed. And it says children must be keyed because we forgot to add the key attribute here to the um, here to the list item. So when we're using a transition group, the the main element inside the transition group has to be keyed. So we're going to go ahead and bind the item dot word value to the key. So the word should all be unique, and um, that should should provide a decent key um, for what we are uh, trying to do. And so now, um, if we do this search, we see a nice fade in on these words. That's that's a nice little effect. So um, we've managed to uh, animate then the uh, search results. Um, and then the next thing that we need to do is add animation to the items of the word list for when new items are added and removed. Um, and so uh, what we can do is we can go in here. Let's get rid of this to do because we got rid of, we we did that one. Um, so then we need to add another transition group, and that indentation is fine there. Um, and so uh, we want to do another name, and um, this one. Let's go ahead and have it uh, slide. We'll call it slide right, and that will slide it in from the right side. Um, and then we're going to um, use the div tag again, and we're also going to put appear on here because we want to we want to animate even the first thing that gets written into this list. Um, so that that's super good. Um, and then of course we don't want to forget to bind the key again. So we're going to say vbind key equals, and this will just be word because each word uh, should be unique. And so then when we uh, do this and we we come back to our editor here. We should be able to add, see these items here, and when we hit add, we see them slide in. And then when we hit remove, because this um, binding goes both directions, they actually slide out. And um, the slide out animation comes from the view to animate package, uh, but view itself applies these transition effects whenever we wrap things in the transition group. Um, so once again, we can see those animations are all working properly. And we still have our search fade in animation working there, no problem. So uh, we are now ready to start tackling um, the uh, messaging situation in this application. Uh, so we want to add message to results display area to let the user know when no results are found. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we should uh, say we can make a nice little div that um, we can make a nice little div that uh, that will contain just say no results. And in here, we can put a nice little h2 that says no words found. And a little paragraph here. Try your search again with different parameters. And that, that should let people know um, that no results were found. And so now we can just use a little vf. And um, the vf can say if results and results dot length is zero. So up here we're saying if results and results of length is greater than zero to, to show results. So we're basically doing the opposite. If it's if the length is equal to zero, then um, show this message. So let's see if we can test that and see if see if it works. So if we do car Oh, we have some kind of error here. Cannot read length property of undefined. Ah, uh, so we have an issue with the way that we wrote this conditional. Um, oh, but that is a typo. So 
Good to find. I had result instead of results. So it's good to develop eyes to see those things really um, quickly. Uh, uh, certainly, certainly an issue. Now, now we have our results showing up. So when we do search, we see our results there. Um, search for fire, we get results. Search for nonsense, no words found. Try again with different parameters. We get our our no results message, no problem. So um, we're done with that sucker. Now uh, we need to add a global messaging, um, the message container. And the message container is going to help us find um, all of this, uh, uh, help us display all of these messages that might come, um, you know, or that need to be shown to the user as they do different things in the application. So this is what the message container looks like. It's pretty simple. It's just an unordered list that's going to show messages. If it has any, it expects a messages property, which is just going to be an array. And it, um, it just pops those messages in there. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, let's go ahead and drop that sucker in. We will uh, say import message container from at slash components slash message container. And then we will add message container. I like to use the dashes in my tags. And so I'll use the quotes there so that I can uh, write it like that. And then, um, and then up above is where we need to put the message container. So let's go ahead and um, say message container is going to go there. And then we need to supply that messages property. Notice that the message container here expects uh, messages, which will be an array. And um, so here we have messages, which is initialized to an empty array. So we can say, um, the bind messages equals messages. And that way we know that the messages value is going through. It's going to be piped into the message container and it's going to be um, bound to this messages property, which is going to then be used inside of the message container here, which is going to be looped through. And then you notice that there's another child component used inside this message container that is, is then um, going through and being duplicated for each mess each message. So for each message in the messages array, this message item is being created. And if, if we look at this message item, you notice that it's already got a transition applied to it. And so they will kind of fade in and fade out as um, as they uh, you know show up and get closed. So um, and the message item, you notice, handles the close button for itself, has a little close method here that it executes. So, uh, so that's kind of the way that those things all go together. Um, so now we just need to make some messages so that we can actually see messages. And we can see down here we have the to-dos, add message to this dot messages to reflect the change. Now, what's interesting to think about here is that the messages are actually little objects. And they have a type and they have text. And that's going to help it um, determine, you know, do the proper display for each message using the type property and the text property of each message. So when we say make a message and add it to the this.messages array, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say like let uh, message equal a little uh, a little object here and then this one would be you added a word so the type would be success and the text would be um, we can use the template literals here and say word successfully added to word list and obviously we want that to look nice and everything so then we can say this.messages.push message. And that would push this message object 
into the list of messages and should show the message when we add a word to the word list. Before we do anything else, like let's just test this and make sure that we did it properly. So um, we can uh, do a search. If we just do a blank search, it actually comes up with words. And then we can hit add to word list and we see that we have a message there. And when we hit close, the message fades away. So that's, that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. We just need to make this happen um, for when we uh, remove words. And, um, and if there's already a word. So, um, so we can just copy these lines and we can um, duplicate them and then change them. So if there's already a word, then the type of message should be info and it should say word is already in the word list, right? And then we can uh, we can come down here and we can um, do remove word and this will be also be a success and um, we'll say removed from word list because it's successful that it was removed it's not a warning or anything that it was removed um, so that um, that should get us sort of all fully featured on our word list so we'll add some words to the word list you notice that we get our messages kind of stacking up we can close them in whatever order and then when we remove a word we get a message that the word was removed also so that's that is pretty great um, we then need to add an error message when the API request fails so let's go ahead and go down here so here's where we're gonna add the error message and this will be an error and the text for this one it's gonna be interesting because um, if you look at this error object which I encourage you to put in a breakpoint or something and look at this error object um, we're just gonna use error.message there and that should um, that should work just fine so that is how we can um, very easily uh, add those messages. Now, if we want to test this error, we can mess up our API URL here, and that will give us a network error. So if we hit search, we can see we have a network error showing up there. So that's, that's useful. Um, of course, we go back and undo that edit and then everything will work once again and we have all the messages showing up that we expect to see so that is everything in this project um, there is a lot more that we could be doing um, it, it would be fun to uh, you know add um, more interesting animations uh, there's definitely other places where other messages might be able to be shown or something like that. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot that, that could be done here. Um, feel free to explore more, um, approach those, uh, stretch goals and, um, you know, maybe try removing view to animate and writing all the animations yourself, doing something like a shuffle on the word list using the move, uh, attribute of the transition group or something else like that. Um, but for now, uh, we're ready to commit our changes and push them up, and we'll be able to see this working on our website. So uh, that is a full walkthrough of the visual enhancement project here. Uh, hopefully it was fun working with some transitions and uh, some messages, both global and local messages. And uh, that's all. Have fun, um, keep experimenting, and I look forward to seeing you on the next project. Bye, everybody.